Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you part two of how to make a restaurant game on the phone. So yeah, by the end of this video, you'll be able to make a finished game where the player has to try to build the customer's orders, and the customers will react depending on how the player does. So yeah, let's get started. So at the end of part one of this series, we got to this point in our game where the customers can walk up and make randomized orders. Uh, but currently, the player can't actually tap on any of the items. So step one, let's fix that. I'll go to this coffee cup sprite, and I can say when I tap on this sprite, well, let's have it play a sound effect, and we could also have it animate for fun. So, okay, that's working. So we've got clickable items. Now for step two, let's make the game keep track of which items the player clicked on. The way I'm gonna do this is, if you'll remember from the last part, we have these variables, you know, coffee, tea, that keep track of what the customer ordered. I'm also gonna make four more variables and call them gave coffee, question mark, you know, gave tea, gave cupcake, and gave flan. And then if the player, say, clicks on the coffee cup, I will set gave coffee to one to show that the player gave the customer that item. So here in the coffee cup sprite, I will make a variable and call it gave coffee, question mark. And then when the player taps on the coffee cup, I will set gave coffee to one. So let's just try that out so far. So I will tap play, customer walks up, Okay, and coffee is in the order, and I tap coffee, and that turned gave coffee to one. So there we go. Okay, and I can tap it again. Oh, one thing is I should make gave coffee be set to zero at the beginning of the game because at that point we haven't given the customer coffee. And actually every time the player gets an order, like a new order, I will also set gave coffee to zero because when a new customer has arrived, we haven't given them coffee yet. I'm gonna give the same code to all the other food item sprites with their variables. And once again, these variables on the screen are a little in the way, so I am going to turn off the display for all of them. Okay, so the game now records which items we clicked on. Now let's make it so that the customer reacts depending on whether their order is correct. So I'll go to the customer sprite and I'm gonna create a new block and I will call it react to order. And I'm gonna have it react to the order after it waits up here at the counter for a couple seconds. And how do we want to make the customer react to their order? Well, we have these variables, coffee, tea, cupcake, flan, those have the numbers of the customer's order. And then we have these other variables, gave coffee, gave tea, gave flan, gave cupcake, and those record what the player actually gave the customer. So we can just check if all of these variables are equal. So if they are all equal, the customer can be happy about their order. And you know, in your game, you can make the customer be as angry or upset as you like if the order is wrong. So I will, in this block, react to order, I will drag out some if blocks and I wanna say, so if coffee equals, oh, and I'll drag out this round variable block from the more blocks category. So if coffee equals gave coffee, and I want to repeat this for all the variables. So I'm just gonna make four of these. So if T equals gave T, flan equals gave flan, and cupcake equals gave a cupcake, then we want the customer to be happy. So I'm gonna indicate that the customer is happy by dragging out a say block and I will just make it say a smiley face. So let's try this out. So the customer walks up, they ordered coffee and flan and they were happy. Okay, I realized two seconds is very uh, is a very short time to complete the orders. Uh, of course, you can make this time as long as you want in your game. I'm gonna give myself a little more time. And the one thing to remember is if you make that time longer, you just wanna go to these food sprites and make them text their part of the order for longer. There we go. Now, I personally think that adding angry reactions is also going to be very fun. So I am going to tap these plus signs and add else blocks. And so in all these if else blocks, if all of these variables are equal to the variables in the order, it will say this smiley face. And then all of these else blocks are if something is wrong in the order. So I will just put a bunch of angry smiley faces of various varieties in here. And let's try this out. So the customer walks up, I'm going to purposefully get their order wrong. I will give them a cupcake. And okay, now they are angry. Okay, so we've got our customers reacting to their orders. Now for the last step, let's make a box for the customer to take their order away in. We have one bug to fix before we do this, which is you may notice sometimes the customer will walk up and order nothing. And so why is this happening? Well, if we look at this create order block, it sets all the variables randomly either zero or one. So it's possible for the customer to just set all these variables to zero and not order anything. You could keep it like that in your game and then you just the player is just supposed to not give the customer anything. But if you want them to always order something, 
you could say, if all these variables are zero, then set coffee to one or something. So they order a coffee. All right, with that done, now let's make the customer be able to take away their order in a box. So I'm just gonna draw a little parcel. You could make it look however you want. So when the game starts, we want this sprite to hide. And then we want the parcel to show up right before the customer walks away. Oop, that one got angry. So I'll go to the customer sprite and after they wait at the counter, I can make them send out a message and I'll call it stop saying order. So I'll put that there. And then for the parcel sprite, when it receives stop saying order, I'll have it show and I'll have the parcel start up here on the counter, maybe at this location. And then I want it to move to about here. So I will have it go to that spot. So customer makes their order, they wait, Ah, so that's pretty good, except they walk away without their order. So I will go back to the sprite and maybe I'll have it, I don't know, wait a second and then move in the same direction as the customer. Oh, and we should make it hide at the end. So if everything goes right, the customer will walk up, order, get the box and walk away with it. There we go. So that's how you could make a restaurant game complete with customer reactions and everything. I hope you have fun adding whatever you want to your games and I'll see you in the next video.